The Indigo Disc dropped a brand new move called Upper Hand, and here's how it works. It's a 65 base power fighting move that has a guaranteed chance to flinch, but it fails unless the opponent is using a priority move like Extreme Speed. Here's the best way I've found to use Upper Hand. Hitmonlee can use Endure, bringing it down to 1 HP. This then pops the Lychee Berry, which not only boosts our attack by one stage, but also activates its ability Unburden, which now doubles its speed. We can then use Reversal, which becomes a 300 power move after Stab, which is twice as strong as Hyper Beam. At 1 HP, Hitmonlee is a sitting duck for priority moves to pick us off. But then all we gotta do is bop him with the upper hand, or foot I guess, which is the most satisfying thing of all time, and nobody ever sees this coming. Alright look, it's always really fun when a new move is released until everybody realizes that it's actually booty. Like there's actually nobody using upper hand right now, but I believe we have cracked the code and it comes in the form of Hitmonlee. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, you should probably hit that subscribe button. Seems like a fun thing to do. And today, we've got a match up against a very scary looking overused team here that has pretty much every threat you can imagine. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So, I'm afraid to lead Mamoswine to get the Stealth Rock up because of this masked little fella right here. They have the Ogre Pond Wellspring, so instead, I decide to lead off with the Scizor, which actually gives me a nice little position here to go for a U-turn, likely they switch, and then I can grab myself some momentum and do some big meaty claws stuff. So, they decide to switch immediately out into the Iron Moth, and uh, old Dorito Bug over here, while it seems like him and Scizor would be homies, they are in fact not. So we get that U-turn off, do a little bit of nothing, and at least now I can decide to switch into whatever I'd like. So, this does seem like a pretty good opportunity to bring in the Mamoswine. I can set up my Stealth Rock, and it's kind of unlikely that they stay in here, knowing that they probably can't Oko me, and then I kind of knock this thing out in return with that Earthquake. So, I figure I'm gonna go ahead and play it safe here, set up the Stealth Rock. It's gonna be nice to try to punish some switches, and Moth coming back in, and in general, Seems like a good day to lay some rocks around. So they actually end up hard switching into the Golden Go. And that tells me this dude is in fact floating in the air with an air balloon. There's no way it's not. It does have the air balloon here, trying to predict an earthquake, but I just lay up that stealth rock. And that is exactly what we're looking for. So Golden Go, it seems like every time they switch into something, there's just another huge threat that I now have to be put on the back foot and deal with. So I figure, you know, Toxtricity actually can switch into this thing if it wants to make it rain here. It can then drop its special attack, and then I can hit something pretty hard here. So, I'm just gonna go right into Toxtricity as they do go for that make it rain. And obviously, it's kind of nice knowing that this thing is air balloon, so we know it's not gonna be Specs or a Scarf or anything like that. Knocks me down to 69 HP. Nice. And this is gonna allow me to... Now I can take another one and go for an Overdrive. Get some big damage off here. And uh, he sees a special attack drop, goes ahead and thinks some nasty thoughts, gets it right back up. Now, sadly, a Punk Rock boosted Overdrive is not quite gonna do enough to this thing. And this Cinnamon is the Winnemon ass fool. Is, you know, sitting in a pretty good spot here with that nasty plot. Now can finish me off with something like a Shadow Ball. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. Toxicity does not quite have the speed here. Um, but I was at least able to chip this thing and put it in range. Also pop in that air balloon to just shit on his parade. And we're having a decent time here because Toxicity didn't look super useful in this matchup for me regardless. So. Now I can go into the Noivern. I'm gonna bring this thing in just because I know that I outspeed. I threaten this thing with a flamethrower. And for that reason, instead, I'm actually gonna end up going for the Tailwind. Expecting a switch, try to grab uh, myself a little of the speed initiative here. It turns out they actually stay in. And I am now about to get rained on, or I guess hailed on. I don't know, I feel like a cheap stripper regardless. And sadly, that is gonna take care of Noivern. Now that's actually really bad for me because Noivern looked pretty nice in this matchup, but it is what it is, I now at least get the Tailwind up so I can try to use that speed. Um, but I feel like, you know what, this is actually a really good time to go into the Hitmonlee. Just because I know this thing's now at minus two special attack, likely does not want to stay in here. Um, but I can go for a knockoff if they want to switch. It also covers you know, for kind of any scenario here. They do just stay in, knockoff is going to be enough even though you ain't even holding on to your balloon anymore. And now Hitmonlee is just chilling by himself like that one last drumstick at the bottom of the KFC bucket and we get to see what they want to switch in here. So, they actually end up going into the Iron Valiant. This thing is quite a threat, and of course it is gonna resist literally my entire moveset. Also, it does activate that Quark Drive with the booster energy, grabs a nice little speed boost, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know what, Hitmonlee, actually, I feel like I have this in the bag. The set is built for moments like this. I'm gonna go for the Endure, knowing that uh, there's a potential for them to set up, but it's more than likely they go for the Moon Blast. It is gonna throw the moon at me, 
and we're able to just barely hang on by a damn thread. Knocks us down to 1 HP, and this is perfect, because this now activates the Lychee Berry, gives us a nice little attack boost, and also, more importantly, gives us Unburden, and we're under Tailwind. So I have like a thousand speed currently, I know I'm gonna be faster, and I also know that Reversal, at uh, the base, it's like 300 power after stab, and uh, I'm gonna make it even crazier with the Terra fighting. I'm gonna put the fist on my head looking ridiculous, but what's even more ridiculous is the damage that Reversal does, especially even at plus one. I am able to be super quick with my crazy spring legs, and a Reversal is gonna absolutely destroy even with the resisted hit. So that takes care of the Iron Valiant, arguably the scarier Mon that I was kind of afraid of in this matchup, and the Tailwind is gonna go away. But it doesn't really matter because we have that Unburden. I am faster than everything at this point. But being at 1 HP is generally bad because priority literally just destroys us. So they see that opportunity, they're gonna go into King Gambit. And a Sucker Punch is obviously coming, so I'm gonna go ahead and predict that, go for the upper hand, say no, 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 not today, good sir. I bop him one, and we will not be taking Sucker Punches today. We also just straight up knock it out because of that attack uh, boost and the Terra, and uh, that is the most satisfying thing and way to kill a King Gambit literally of all time. So. One of the most interesting parts about this upper hand set is now they know that I have that. So they're going to be reluctant to go for a priority move like an Ice Shard with this back Scalibur. So I figure they're not going to go for an Ice Shard knowing that that could potentially happen. And instead, I'm just going to go for the reversal. Now, it turns out they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. And they're going to go for a defensive Terra with the Fairy. So this thing puts the heart on its head. Now he's going to resist a reversal, and now we're just hoping for no Ice Shard. They do not go for the priority, and a reversal comes through. And again, there's nothing wants to take a reversal, especially with the Terra fighting. And uh, even with your resistance, that is definitely going to obliterate my dude. Down goes the Backscalibur, and Hitmonlee is on an absolute tear out here. And uh, it is incredibly satisfying. This set is actually... Hitmonlee's just always been one of those guys that... Uh, there's so many different options for this thing. This might be one of my favorite sets to work with right now, but now they just go into the Iron Moth. Literally everything dies to a reversal, so they're just going to go ahead and run from the match, and uh, that is going to be the end of it. And they probably were like, ah, the Sucker Punch is an easy play here, but life comes at you fast. Not Arguably not as fast as that upper hand, but that is going to be the end of that one. And now we do have another match for you here because this is the most fun Hitmonlee ever. So in this matchup here, looking at the team preview, the first thing I noticed is... The only priority that's going to be able to stop something like the Hitmonlee is going to come in the form of like a first impression from the low kicks. And that is looking nice and juicy. So let's jump into the match. All right, so I'm not seeing an immediate threat of a fire type. So I'm actually just going to lead off with the Scizor once again. The big meaty claws are in the spotlight as they end up leading off with the Sandy Shocks. So I figure this thing's probably just here to set up the Stealth Rock. And here's why I actually, I really like Scizor as a lead in certain opportunities, just because a slow pivot with the U-turn, uh, a lot of the time it, it works out really nicely in that I can get some huge stab damage there, but also now I get to bring in something for free because they've already set up their Stealth Rock, and I figure one thing that works nicely here is going to be the Noivern for a couple different reasons. First of all, Buddy is fast as hell, and also looks badass, but more importantly, I can drop a Draco Meteor here, uh, with that chip that I've got, it's going to be able to hopefully finish this thing off. So I come in, frisk his leftovers, and then he looks back at me. He's like, hey, yep, th there they are. There's the there's leftovers I was telling you about, boss. So uh, at this point, I'm just going to go for the Draco Meteor. There's really no reason not to. If I decide to Tailwind and get, and get greedy, it's just going to kill me with a Thunderbolt. So I drop one on his ass. That does take care of the Sandy Shocks, which is great. So this Noivern functions uh, super nicely in kind of enabling the rest of the team. And that as they switch into Porygon here, I'm thinking this is fine. I can actually just go for a Tailwind here and uh, set up, you know, potentially Toxtricity or whatever else in the back that looks nice. So I decide to go for the Tailwind. Turns out this thing is a freaking Choice Scarf. I keep getting destroyed by these Choice Scarf Porygon Zs lately. And at this point, they're just all Choice Scarf, for real. But Noivern goes down for no reason, sadly. Uh, but what that does do is opens the door for a Revenge Switch into, you already know, the Absolute Goat. We're going to bring in the Hitmonlee. And this is actually a bit of a different Hitmonlee, where it has the same general concept, except I'm working with Swords Dance on this set. And this thing was actually buffed in this gen recently with the access to Swords Dance, so you already know 
I'm gonna try to take advantage of that. So they decide to switch into Hydrapple here as I get up the nice little Swords Dance, and we are now sitting at plus two attack, which is amazing. We still have that Leechy Berry opportunity to get myself to plus three, so I'm gonna go for the Endure here, and hopefully they go for something like a Fickle Beam, which will knock me down to one, but instead, they actually go for the Giga Drain, and that is not gonna do a whole lot of damage to me, also not even enough to knock me down into Leechy Berry range. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, we're just gonna go for another Endure here, and it does actually pop. They are gonna go for another Giga Drain, brings us down to one, and now it is absolutely lunchtime up in this hoe. We can pop the Leechy Berry, we are now nourished, and our attack is sitting at plus three. So this Hitmonlee now gets unburdened faster than everything, barring priority, but you already know we have the help for that. So, not sure how this Hydrapple is built, but if they switch it into the Hitmonlee, I'm inclined to think it's probably, you know, some type of defensive set. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for the Terra Fighting, and a close combat is gonna be looking pretty strong here at plus three. It's surely gonna be able to pick this thing off. Uh, I was messing around with this close combat set over reversal just because uh, I found myself in situations where sometimes having just an immediate attack without having to get down to one HP is nice. Uh, but a close combat is gonna be able to do it. Listen, at plus three, it doesn't matter what move you're clicking with Hitmonlee, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt, especially close combat's solid anyway. So. Now, the exact situation we were looking for does happen. They're gonna go into the low kicks here, and we already know being at one HP, they're gonna first impression, so I can be like, no, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there, my good sir. Go ahead and upper hand him, and that is just gonna straight up knock out the low kicks. So, that is actually amazing, because low kicks is always such an annoying Pokemon for me. A choice band first impression, it does way too much damage. So, that is amazing to see that thing gone, and we've taken, we punched a nice little hole in the team, literally. So. They go back into the Porygon Z. This thing is Choice Scarf, but again, I'm faster than everything they've got. And uh, I know that a close combat pretty much finishes the game, except for the fact that they actually have the Ghost Terra. And the reason why I was stoked to use Hitmonlee in this matchup is because while I am walled by Ghost, they didn't have one. Except, you can just turn this thing into one, and close combat goes right through his ass, and the Shadow Ball is gonna finish off the Hitmonlee. But not before we got the most satisfying upper hand, and uh, we were at least able to take care of two big threats. So, they are still very much in it at this point, and while well, at least they have committed the Terra, which is nice for me, uh, Hitmonlee is gonna go down. So, now I get to switch into whatever I would like here, and I'm feeling like, you know what, this is the exact situation we are in Assault Vested Blastoise can truly shine. I bring in the Blastoise here. I've actually been liking using an Assault Vest set because we can sponge special attacks all day long, but also people just love to expect this thing to be a Shell Smash set and they just they treat it as much more of a kind of sweeper set. So they go for the Stab Shadow Ball and that does pretty much nothing. That dude was surely expecting that to do way more damage and I can get a nice little Surf, which is a two hit KO here. So. Knowing that they know that a Shadow Ball is not going to do dick for damage, I can just instead predict a switch here and go for the flip turn. So, they actually do instead switch into the Magnazone here, which is amazing. I can then flip turn, get a little bit of chip, and then Blastoise gets tucked back uh, for later as a solid check to that Porygon. It can potentially lock itself into a Thunderbolt, but Assault Vest is, uh, is real solid. So, now on the nice little momentum here, I can actually end up bringing in Colossal. So, as I do come in, take a whole bunch from the Stealth Rock, I also know that I can definitely take at least one attack from the Magnazone here and then hit super hard with a Flamethrower, but they just decide to Volt Switch and there is just pivoting going on all over the damn place. They're actually just gonna go right back into the Porygon Z. This thing downloads some illegal special attack from the Dark Web as uh, a Flamethrower is gonna be enough to do it. So the chip on this thing from that Surf uh, puts it in range to be taken care of. And that's a very scary, you know, scarf threat out of the way. I was kind of at least in a good spot regardless against that, having the priority bullet punch with the scissor. But that is uh, amazing to see that thing gone. And now they can go right back into the Magnazone. Sadly, the Volt Switch has put me in range to where I definitely died to another one. And that is what is gonna go down here. So Colossal, not quite gonna get the steam engine sweep that sometimes we're looking for, um, but is totally fine as we kind of did our job there. So Magnazone gets switched out and they do kill me with the Volt Switch. So now I can just see what they wanna bring in. Turns out it is gonna be the Excadrill and uh, I can decide what I want to go into here. So it is floating in the air with its air balloon, um, but that is pretty much fine, because I'm not going to go for ground anyway, as full health scissor is a perfect answer for this. I know that I can live any attack this thing wants to throw at me, and then I can just go right for the close combat, considered maybe expecting a switch here, but surely their final mon being Magnazone, they're just going to stay in. I'm able to take an earthquake nicely, 
and fire off the close combat to finish off the Excadrill. So we've got one more Steel Boy to take care of here. Sadly, I do drop uh, my defenses. So at minus one special defense, I surely go down to the Magnazone here. And my final two mons are gonna be the Blastoise along with Toxtricity. So interesting final matchup here as Magnazone does come in and this thing is sadly gonna be faster, is able to finish me off with that Thunderbolt, down goes the Scizor. Um, but I'm actually in a spot where I'm feeling like Toxtricity can kind of bring the game home for me because I resist both of this thing's stab and while it resists mine as well, it seems like I have a nice little two hit KO here with uh, whatever I click. So I bring in the Toxtricity who is not generally thought of as the guy that comes in and lives stuff, but I can outspeed, go for an overdrive, which is gonna be a two hit KO. Not only that, but also give me that throat spray. So I'm now sitting at plus one special attack. I actually, I think Boom Burst is definitely the optimal play there for a little bit more damage, but it's mostly fine. I'm able to live the Thunderbolt, which is amazing. And then one more overdrive should be able to seal it up for us. So down goes the Magnazone, and effectively that is gonna be the end of the game. So I thought that was just a super good match. It showcased some really cool stuff and uh, came right down to it. So thank you guys very much for watching. For real, the support is absolutely amazing. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to my YouTube members. You guys are really making the full-time content dream happen. If you wanna become a member, you can uh, hit that join button below the video. And once per week, I'm uploading extra content to the channel for members only. If that's something you're interested in and supporting the channel, it is greatly appreciated. But as always, you guys just being here and uh, supporting and just watching the videos is amazing. And uh, I really appreciate you guys and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.